Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Anne Wawadu. On the headlines. Police rescue young man allegedly kept in chains. A federal high court certain in Lagos orders interim full feature of 7.6 billion Nara set to have been allegedly kept in Sterling Bank, PLC, by former Petroleum Minister Daisyani Alison Madwiki. River State Government orders closure of over 1,800 schools steps up reform of its education sector. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, has so far traced a total of 47.2 billion Nara and 487.5 million dollars in cash and properties to former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Alison Madweke. And this is according to two officials of the anti-graft agency, Tony Oriladeh and Aisha Gambari, in an article released to the media. The EFCC says the discoveries followed painstaking investigations by its operatives and accused the former minister of waging a war against millions of Nigerians who were heavily burdened by poverty by the sheer nature of her acquisitions. According to the EFCC officials, although the former minister has continued to deny any financial misdeed, insisting that it is being severely, she is being severely maligned and persecuted by the EFCC. The strength of weighty evidences placed before Nigerian courts has led to a string of judicial pronouncement ordering the full feature of all allegedly ill-gotten wealth linked to her to the federal government of Nigeria. The EFCC, in the course of investigation, traced another property valued at $37.5 million to the former minister in Banana Island, Lagos. She was set to have purchased the 15-story building, which comprises 18 flats and six penthouses between 2011 and 2012, from the developer's YF Construction and Real Estate. The property was allegedly acquired in the name of shell company Ruzimex Limited, which is managed by one Afame Funawoke Dim, principal partner Steelwaters Law Firm in Lagos. On August the 7th, 2017, Justice Chuka Obiozo, a vacation judge sitting at the Federal High Courts in Nikoi, Lagos, ordered the final full feature of $37.5 million dollars uh, allegedly belonging to Mrs. Alison Madweke, the order followed an experte application filed on July the 17th, 2017 by the EFCC. But also in Lagos, Mrs. Alison Madweke allegedly bought a block of six-unit service departments at number 135 Awolo Road, Ikui, just a few hundred meters away from the EFCC Zonal Operations Hub at the rate of 800 million Nara on January the 6th, 2012. Several other properties were also linked to the former minister in Rivers and Bielsa states, as well as the Federal Capital Territory. The Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has ordered the interim full feature of a sum of 7.6 million billion naira set to have been illegally kept in Sterling Bank PLC. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission linked the offence to the former Minister of Petroleum Resources, that's Mrs. Deizani Alison Madweke. But the Commission also, who wanted the money forfeited to the federal government, told Justice Chuka Obiozo via an expertise application that the 7.6 billion naira was part of a sum of $153.3 billion, million dollars, which Mrs. Deizani allegedly siphoned from the coffers of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation sometime in 2014. The FCC also alleged that Mrs. Alison Madweke stashed the money in three banks, and the federal government has since February last year, through an order granted by another judge, Justice Muslim Hassan, also of the Federal High Court, recovered part of the money from other banks. The anti graft agency recalled that the federal government had ordered 23.4 billion naira and a sum of $5 million and another eight nine point zero eight billion naira out of one hundred and fifty three point three million dollars. It urged the court to order Sterling Bank to deliver up to the federal government the sum of seven point six billion naira still in its custody. Just as Obiozo granted the order and directed the commission to cause it to be published. He then adjourned till August the 28th, 2017, for the bank and any other interested party to appear before him to show cause why the funds should not be permanently forfeited to the federal government. 
Meanwhile, the federal high court sitting in Lagos has struck out a suit against seven commercial banks filed by the federal government to compel the banks to remit $793.2 million, allegedly hitting with them in contravention of the Treasury single account policy. Justice Chuka Obiozo also awarded 200000 each in damages against the federal government and in favor of all the affected banks except for Sky Bank, which was not represented in court. A group of protesters demanding details of the president's health have gathered for a third day of their sit-out at the Unity Fountain in Abuja. Members of civil society organization under the umbrella of concerned citizens say they remain adamant in their demand for the return of the president or his resignation. Members who converged on the venue for their protest as early as 9 a.m. today condemned the attacks on them yesterday by security agencies. This government has not only has not provided answers to the, the questions we have been raising. Instead, they have insulted us and told us that we don't have the right to ask questions and that we are miscreants and criminal elements. Again, again, seeking for relevance. That's what they said we, we are seeking for. Again, again, the government has said that the president is a private citizen and does not owe Nigerians any explanation whatsoever. Well, it's only in Nigeria that you find a, a, a country where Nigeria is the only country in the world where the president will abscond from duty for 40, 94 days and the same government will send his aides to insult us. But like Charlie Boy always says, our mumu don't do. And indeed, the mumu you don't reach like this. It is only in this country a president will try to run a whole country like this from another country. I mean, it is, don't we have shame anymore? What is going on? What is going on? Okay, so we're we are gathered here this morning to say enough is enough. Yes. It is a simple thing. Yes. It is a simple thing. Yes. Our mantra is one. Our decision is one. Yes. Unequivocally, we are saying that the president will either resign or resume. Yes. Yes. It's two options. It's very simple. From Abuja, we go to Benue State, where the government has appealed to the organized labor to shelve their plans industrial action over the non-payment of salaries amounting to 40 billion naira, while the state works out a solution to address their welfare. Governor Samuel Otom made this appeal when he received the ultimatum given by the workers threatening to embark on indefinite strike at the end of August if their salary arrears are not cleared. Meanwhile, the workers are suggesting borrowing by government as the immediate solution to their problem instead of waiting on the monthly federal allocation and Paris cleared refunds, which issued never enough, which they say will never be enough to pay their salaries. Every month I pay salaries. It's just that it's not enough to cover the entire staff. So myself and labor unions agreed that uh, a session of the workers should be paid. At the local government, teachers are paid for this month, and the following month, local government staff are paid. So for every two months, every worker in Benue State receives full salary of one month. What we want is do something. Uh, you know, if people uh, see the, 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 the actions government has taken, to address this matter, whether it is 100% or it's less than 100%, people will understand. But where government waits for allocation to come, for Paris crop to come, without any other effort, that is where our people are not satisfied. A young man named Bolaji Sholola of number 18, Damigoro Street in Mushi, who was allegedly kept in chains for over a year, has now been rescued by the police. The boy's 85-year-old grandmother told the police the boy is mentally ill. But the police area commander for Area D has condemned this action and he was that he was kept for the past for over one year. He was alleged to have been kept in a dehumanized condition by the grandmother with the consent of family members. He is currently being taken to the psychiatric hospital in Yaba by the area commander D. We have more stories on news across Nigeria. Please stay with us.